The story of the Buddha's life, like all of Buddhism, is a story about confronting suffering. He was born sometime between the 6th and 4th century BC, the son of a wealthy king in the Himalayan foothills of Nepal. It was prophesied that the young Buddha, then called Siddhartha Gautama, would either become the emperor of India or a very holy man. Since Siddhartha's father desperately wanted him to become the former, he kept the child isolated in a palace. Young Gautama had every imaginable luxury, jewels, servants, lotus ponds, even beautiful dancing women. For 29 years, Gautama lived in bliss, protected from the smallest misfortunes of the outside world. But then he left the palace for short excursions. What he saw amazed him. First he met a sick man, then an aging man, and then a dying man. He was astounded to discover that these unfortunate people represented normal, indeed inevitable parts of the human condition that would one day touch him too. Horrified and fascinated, Gautama made a fourth trip outside the palace walls and encountered a holy man who'd learned to seek spiritual life in the midst of the vastness of human suffering. Hello, welcome to Face to Face with me. I'm Daisy Anwar in a program that brings the world to your screen and where we meet people who make a difference to our lives. In this special edition of celebrating the Holy Day of Vaisak, I talk to one renowned Buddhist monk, the Venerable Master Chin Kung, who lives here in Hong Kong. And Master Chin Kung has been studying Buddhism for the last 64 years and he has been teaching for 57 years and now in his 89th year he's still active teaching students via the internet all over the world and I'm lucky to be invited here to meet Master Chin Kung himself so follow me on Face to Face with Daisy Anwar. The Venerable Master Chin Kung is an eminent monk in the Pure Land School of Mahayana Buddhism and is the founder of the Buddha Educational Foundation. Master Ching Kung has studied Buddhism for over 60 years and lectured on Buddhism for almost just as long. For most of his life, Master Ching Kung has worked consistently to disseminate Buddhist teachings, to bridge gaps and reconcile misunderstandings between different faiths around the world. This is done through numerous interfaith visits and dialogues especially in Asia and Australia, and through lectures conducted online, through satellite TV, as well as the publication of free books and CDs. In recognition of his achievements, Master Chin Kung has been bestowed several awards and honours, including the Order of Australia by Queen Elizabeth II. Born in Lujiang County, Anhui Province, China, Mandarin is the Master's main language. Before meeting him, I talked to his English language secretary and translator Stefan to understand more about the work that the Master does and the Buddhism that he teaches. Stefan is a huge help for me during my visit to Master Chin Kung's Learning Center in Hong Kong from where he conducts his online lecture. Okay. Wow. So this is a very uh, small uh, chanting hall. It's very peaceful, the energy here. Mm, it is. <laughs> And as you can see, there are various Buddha's image. Mm -hmm. uh, the center one is the Amitabha Buddha that uh, we, uh, the Pure Land Buddhist, uh, we always uh, mm -hmm. come to as our guide. Yes. Now, Stefan, when we talk about um, Buddhism, yes. you know, whether is, is it a religion or is it more of a philosophy? Awesome. Tell me your your idea of it. I mean, what is the essence of Buddhism itself? Okay. There's a very simple but very fundamental teaching that doesn't matter which school you go to, they will teach you the same thing, which is uh, for us to acquire more wisdom. Uh, but how do we acquire more wisdom? Then you need to quiet your mind first, because our minds are too busy these days with so much impact, so much information coming from outside. Our minds are not settled. When our mind is not settled, it's not serene, then you don't have the wisdom to perceive, to judge, to, to look around you. So the Buddhist way, uh, again, no matter which school you go to, 
The ultimate goal is for you to quiet your mind, to find that peace in you. Then you can better see the world. Then you can find the truth for yourself.、Uh, so that's the idea. And、uh, to me, you can call it religion or faith, but to me, it's it's just the way I would like to see myself to be in a couple of years. See how far I can get in terms of quieting my mind and and be there. <laughs> I'm not sure I, I answer your question. <laughs> No, it's interesting because quieting the mind. I mean, as a human being, we are born with the capacity to think.、Yes. So it's basically that is the fundamental、um, thing that we can do in order to maybe achieve that state of peace. You know,、mm, if, but, our, if our mind is. But the funny thing is, Buddha actually said, when we are first born, our mind is full of tranquility. We actually learn, we acquire all those negative things through learning,、mm-hmm. by learning the wrong thing, of course. So Buddha is using different ways.、Uh, for the Pure Land, we chant, as I told you, Amit Amitabha Fo, Amitabha Buddha's name.、Uh, for the Zen school, they meditate. They, you know, they 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 will、uh, sit in the in a place for a long time, concentrating in something.、Uh, so all these different ways are trying to bring out the innate wisdom we all. Originally possess, but somehow we need to uncover it.、Uh, so, so that's the teaching of Buddhism.、Mm. Really. The wisdom is actually already there. Yes. We just have to go back to the source and look and for it. it again and find it. Yes. So Buddha actually said to us, "You and I are equal. There's no difference between you and I."、Uh, yes. All the wisdom, all the capability, all the magnificence is already in your heart. Just go find it. Okay.、Yes. Let's go and find the master. <laughs> we'll ask him, and maybe he'll share his wisdom with us. He is infinitely more wise than I. <laughs> <laughs>、oh, I'm very happy to see you. Oh, 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 I'm very happy to see you. 那个，印尼也，这个马来西亚的，那几，他们那个马哈蒂是马哈蒂，马哈蒂，哦、oh, ，OK， 马哈蒂拉扎西，不是 ，Former Prime Minister Mahathir、yes. of Malaysia. He was he was given、uh, bestowed、uh, honorary doctor from the Islamic State University. Uh, and uh, he invited Master to go there to to be a witness. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now we'll we'll go and go to the conference room. Okay. Sit down. Then, 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 family相处，大家要多少岁？你说印印度尼西亚是 really a wonderful country, but there's one thing: there are too many political parties. If each one of them can work with one another, thinking of one thing to benefit the Indonesian people, then Indonesia will be better. Hmm. They need to have a good leader. 好的领导，能够团结去动，团结奋斗出去。With a good leader who can unite everyone, make everyone come together, treating each other equally, then Indonesia can be a lot better.、Mm-hmm. Interesting observation. <laughs> <laughs>